Electronic Sounds Audio, the YouTube channel for you. Hey guys, it's Dean from Electronic Sounds. Check this out. About a month ago, I got an email here from a guy named Mike Kluchar. He says, enjoying your drums and macros, so inspiring. Attached is a thank you saw sample. I use it as a synth. Wait a minute, hold the phone. It's not every day that somebody sends me a sample. This is totally cool. I immediately loaded this up inside of Beatmaker 3. Started messing around with this. Thanks a lot, Iklushar. Let's check out what I came up with, you guys. So here's the original sample that he sent, guys. It's the Iklushar saw, and you can see the wave here, and it sounds like this. So it's a really metallic, kind of a high-pitched sound, and my very first thought was that we could sound design this into like a playable lead sound, maybe put some other layers of, uh, you know, strange sounds in there and see what we can come up with. Alright, let me go ahead and talk you through a little bit about what I made. First off, I've got um, my Novation Launch Key Mini off the screen here, which is allowing me to play this sound melodically. Um, and so here we have the sample, uh, this is the Eklushar saw, and I've edited, uh, excuse me, I've trimmed out the little bit of the, you know, beginning of, of the noise that was on there, so we get just the, just a really, um, you know, punchy transient. It's kind of a metallic sound, kind of an ethnic sound, sort of, sort of, uh, you, you know, uh, what we've got also is I've got, um, I've got like EQ on here already, which we're hearing. I've got uh, some delay on here as well, which we're hearing. Um, so keep that in mind as I'm showing you the samples that we're hearing a little bit of delay uh, on them. Just very subtle. Uh, let's get back here to the sampler page. Okay, and so I doubled up the Eklushar saw with another layer of the same sample. Just to make it a little bit thicker and more robust. And then I started layering uh, some of my samples over the top of this. This one is just called I Am Weird. Let's see here. And it looks a little bit like that. On its own, it sounds like this, which is basically just a punchy, um, you know, short transient synth sound. But you can see that it's, you can hear rather, that it's adding, you know, Certainly something to the sound and thickening it up a bit. I added one more sample here, uh, which was just a random junk stab. Unmute that. So now you can hear that we've got, you know, quite a big, uh, thick and robust metallic sound. I really like the delay on it. Just to, you know, thicken it up and give it a little bit more life. I made a little bit of a groove with this. Also, you know, we can we can play it on the keyboard. Um, I went ahead and put this into uh, a klezmer scale just for fun. This was my first attempt at, at messing around with it and trying to create something with this sound. I think I started a little bit too um, kind of comic, playful in my approach. Because um, I was sort of, you know, coming up with something like this. I mean, I like the klezmer scale and stuff, but I just felt like that's a little, you know, silly almost. Um, might be appropriate, you know, for, for uh, puppet shows, that kind of thing. Kind of a neat sound. Um, anyways, that's what it sounds like if you put it into the klezmer scale. And let's take a listen here. So what I've done is I've done the sound design on pad one, and if we open that up, you know, here's, you know, that patch per se, and we've got all four samples on this pad. Now, if we put this into keys mode, now we're, you know, playing that pad melodically, but if you, you know, jump to the next pads page here, I've added some drum sounds. Um, and made a little groove. It's 
kind of the sneaky dubstep puppet groove. <laughs> So I started up a conversation with this fellow to thank him for sending me the sample. It turns out, guys, that Saw 1 Wave was not a synth saw, which I had originally thought, but was actually made from sawing, pu uh, excuse me, from sawing puppets in his workshop. Excuse me, what? Exactly. This guy works out of a, a puppet theater in the UK, guys. And check out these pictures of this puppet he made. That's what we're creating sounds with. We're creating sounds with the sound of a saw that's sawing in the process of creating this puppet. Now that's what sound design is all about. Thank you so much for sending this sample like Clouchard. This is fantastic. But ultimately I did feel that that was a little bit too playful. So we went ahead, well there was no we rather, but I went ahead and um, sketched out a uh, another you know example which we heard in the opening there. And I've got the uh, Clouchard saw here. You can hear that I've done, you know, a little bit of adjusting to the sound. In fact, um, it looks like I've added another layer into the sound, another another one-shot layer, uh, the hard hollow hitter, and let's play that back. Um, it sounds awfully like the one we had before. Anyhow, maybe it, maybe I'm just mistaken there, but there's there's all the the layers of the sounds. I think one of the reasons that it sounds different is that I've taken the delay and the reverb off the patch and I've ran them through the sins um, of delay and reverb that are uh, in, the, in, in this particular mix uh, sketch that I've put together. So it gives the, the, the sound a little bit more um, of a robust sound. If I'm not mistaken, those would probably be, um, yeah. They're going to be the um, Audio Damage Dub Station 2 and the Audio Damage um, e, uh, EOS 2 for the reverb, which is why they sound so delicious on that on that sound, you know. Um, but here's that that groove that I came up with that we heard in the in the beginning. Sorry, it's a little bit loud. Let me just turn that down a click. So it's basically just, you know, how I do it lately, you know, in Beatmaker 3, um, which will be just a bunch of, be just a bunch of one shots mostly. That was actually a loop there though. Okay, cool. So we've got one shots, we've got a top loop, big fat uh, techno kick drum, some crash and down filter. And we've got a riser here that I put together. A little bit of a pump on it. Uh, oh, because I've got it muted on the other side. Sorry about that. Yeah, so the pumping riser sounds a little like this. Cool. And so, let's see here. Like on the techno bank itself, I did a no kick macro. For fun stuff, you know. Um, on the uh, Clouchard saw bank, um, there's some, you know, macros on this that we do a big filter sweep on. Um, that's really about it, guys. I'm going to, um, you know, give this patch away. Uh, there'll be a download link in the description. Um, it's the iClusar patch, guys. This was a really fun, uh, creative project. Who knew uh, that uh, I'd be making a video about uh, what we can do with, you know, samples that have come out of a studio uh, sawing puppets, guys. This is super cool. Just another awesome way that we can use Beatmaker 3 for sound design. I'm going to put a link to their website in the description, guys. This is some really fantastic stuff. I'm a, actually a pretty big fan of puppets. Um, there's quite a, uh, a few videos of some of the stuff they've done here. I mean, take a look at this puppet, you guys. My God. Look at this stuff. Anyways, sound design and puppets, guys. This is cool stuff.
This is the song mode here where I sketched out the little groove, little techno puppet groove that we heard there. And I'm going to play this a little bit and you'll see on the macro for the Iklushar uh, patch that I've done a little bit of filter automation here. Um, this is one of the first, I mean I've done this before but for the most part this is one of the first times uh, that I've actually you know started doing a little bit of automation and I'm going to show you um, how I did that so we'll just when the Iklushar synth hits measure uh, oh my goodness when the Iklushar synth hits measure 16 here um, the filter cutoff is going to open up and uh, you'll hear what I mean check it out <laughs> Started, and the filter cutoff on it is really down and here we see the macro opening up that filter cutoff But then when it you know repeats again it will close that and then open it back up again so let's take a look at how I did that guys okay let's take a look at how I did this we're going to highlight or select the pattern here we don't really need to have that open we can just hit edit and here's those notes um, let's see here if we go into the piano roll we'll see those notes there they are melodically that's the lead. Da, 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 dun, dun, dun. Um, and let's see here. If we go into pattern automations, I usually am using the pattern MIDI menu, and it's just like I'll usually get in here and do some velocity auto, uh, you know, adjusting. You can see that I've actually done that on this part here on some of those really done some, um, you know, made those parts a little bit lower in velocity so they don't assault you quite so much. And sound a little bit more groovy um, and then in the automations section here what I've done is I've clicked the plus button and I've just so I've chosen that I want to automate you know um, filter cutoff macro 4 here and then you know here it is it starts at the top and then as we hit this you know section of the pattern it's going to you know start you know moving that knob and this is embedded right into the pattern so that any time that I repeat this pattern, it's going to repeat that automation. So all I had to do was just, you know, duplicate this pattern over here, and the automation was already there for me. I think I made some adjustments at the end afterwards, but the automation was, you know, built into that pattern. So it carries over if you copy it um, throughout the song. I hope that made sense. Let me actually... Um, show you a little bit more specifically maybe if you want to do your own automation um, because there's nothing here yet right so what you have to do is is just press the automation button here and now you'll be able to you know decide what you'd like to do you know b1 happens to be the the bank that the Aklushar send is on and here's you know all the things you could you know do for instance let's say you wanted to automate the volume of the crash symbol you would just you know select it here um, or something on that pad right you know so that here's that that pad the crash symbol pad um, and you would just you know there it is the volume of the crash symbol and you've added a lane of automation now into the pattern and you just start you know go in there change your um, grid as you need to to do your automation with the automation tools down here that's a whole another video um, but that's basically how you're doing it I hope that's helpful
I haven't made one-shot sample packs in quite some time, but with all the use I'm getting out of Beatmaker 3 and how convenient it is to just load one-shots into it and make, you know, stuff, this is really helpful for me personally, guys. So now I'm going to have another 300 plus base one-shots to work with inside of Beatmaker 3. You get what I'm saying? Salutations amis, j'espère vraiment qu'il n'y a pas de loup à propos. Salutations amis, j'espère vraiment qu'il n'y a pas de loup à propos.